So we're at Air Venture 2017 and somebody thought it was a good idea to let me fly this thing. Uh, this airplane is built in 38. It's an actual DC-3, not a C-47, so it's way, way, way before World War II. I got to do the takeoff and the landing. Everything's nice and easy. Your speed's on 90 knots, which is very nice. Let this airplane land itself. There you go. When I tell you to, we're going to ease the throttles back, not close them, okay? The flying at Oshkosh is not without its challenges. The flight started with this happening. He's asking to stop. He's asking to stop your run-up. The marshals are pissed off. They're telling us to hold. DC-3 blasted a piper off the taxiway. Oh, oh shit. shit. Three RV runway. Three blasted a piper off the runway. Air Venture is the world's largest aviation event. This is the ultimate place to go for any pilot or aviation enthusiast. Everything that flies is there. I'm always amazed at what I see. If you've been, you want to go back. And if you haven't been, it's got to be on your list to go. The Flight Chops project has afforded me some pretty cool opportunities at Oshkosh over the years, and this year is no different. Thanks to Gold Seal, we're flying a DC-3. Gold Seal was actually the first company to have an online ground school program in the United States. We have a private pilot program, an instrument pilot program, and added about uh, two years ago a remote pilot program for the, for the drone operator. Very happy to, to have the opportunity to be able to show this airplane around. And this airplane's pretty interesting. I don't know if you've been to the Smithsonian, but there's an Eastern Airlines DC-3 hanging up in that one. This one is one serial number off from that airplane, so it came off the line in Santa Monica right after that one. That's a big airplane, takes 800 gallons of fuel. This thing is really heavy and really sluggish. You will be getting up there, you'll be reading the checklist, you'll be helping with the engine start. It takes two people to fly the airplane. I mean, it's not a single pilot airplane. He'll probably do the taxiing because just getting it out on this grass is a, is a real challenge. Captain will be Dan Greider. He's a retired Delta captain and been flying tail draggers from Beach 18s to anything you can name for 30 years. The day before our flight, I met the Captain Dan for a thorough cockpit briefing. Welcome to the DC-3. I'm Dan. Steve. Steve. We'll step through a couple little things uh, that we're going to do for tomorrow and uh, get you kind of acclimated. You'll be doing all the flying from the left seat, but I'll be doing all the helping for you because you're probably going to need some. Gold Seal has been a fabulous sponsor that has used the airplane and recognized the airplane for its historic value and the marketing power that it has because people everywhere are mesmerized by the DC-3. Yeah. That's the reason we're up here right now. That's the reason that you're flying. It's uh, by the invitation of uh, Gold Seal and yeah. uh, they've picked out some uh, celebs that, uh, that they want to fly it. And I guess you're one of them. I guess I'm one of them. Yeah, cool. good. All right, well, I'm looking forward to flying with Yes, you. sir. Welcome on board. All right. So. I can't believe this out of ground height. This is like... Yeah, you're what way... are we at? 40 feet? No, you're about 18 feet. <laughs> it's an unusual sight picture. And then on takeoff, it's an unusual side picture as well because the whole world changes when the tail comes up. It feels like the nose is going down, but really the tail is coming up and all of a sudden you can see a little bit better. We do a checklist to get us going. The concept is, is that we do all of our dirty work. We do all of our actual work on the airplane and then we use the checklist to confirm that the work has been accomplished. We'll taxi out during taxi. I'll do the power and get us out to the runway. At what's literally the world's busiest airport during air venture, I'm glad I won't need to worry about taxiing. Your only job is going to be to fly the airplane on takeoff, after takeoff, and during the flight. You won't see me touching this very much at all unless I just have to. So I'll talk you through the flight, but I won't, I won't reach up there and do it for you. The fun part's the flying. Tremendous amount of lift. 100 foot wingspan, 25,000 pound airplane that gets in the air at 60 knots. I mean, it's, it's crazy. I'll take care of communications, power mixture, temperatures. I'll take checklists. I'll take care of everything else for you. That's all you got to do. Okay. Fly it like a hero. And as I climbed in the following morning, I was left with a lot to remember. And I'm not going to lie, I was intimidated. Uh, the truth is, I've never been more nervous about one of these things. I don't know exactly why, but I'm really nervous about this one. This is a really, 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 really big airplane. Captain Chops, are you ready for this? No, I'm not ready. 
What is this? What are we going to be flying? It's a DC-3. What year is it? And if you're a fan of aviation YouTube videos, you definitely have to check out Steve Owen Knievo if you don't already know who he is. He's a friend of mine and a fellow aviation YouTuber. Look at the setup you got. Look at that. Yeah, man. It's nice. Look at the size of this like throttle friction. Every single thing is just a giant knob. Or... So you got this eye to ground height. Uh, the sight picture is going to be pretty crazy. Yeah. We packed the plane with a bunch of my friends and Dan briefed them. When you hear the gear come down and know that we're getting close to the earth, find a seat and get a seat belt on. Steve-O strapped into the jump seat and we got going. All right, we're going to start an engine and let him warm up. Starting sequence is we're going to bring on the battery, that little sound. Here's my oil pressure. I'm going to start the left engine, so if you want to take a look outside and see. Yeah, we're going to say clear prop, obviously. We're going to say clear prop if you want to. Clear prop! I'm turning on the boost pump, and here comes our propeller. And I'm counting blades here. Yeah. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. I'll go ahead and spin it through pretty good. Yep. And now I'm going to bring on mixture, mags, and some throttle. And see if we can get this baby to light. trimmed the second engine start process for time. Just well, can't believe how every single knob and button in this thing is a just giant. Well, you've heard of state of the art? Yeah, this is the start of the art. Uh, this airplane was built in 38, one of the early ones off the, it's an actual DC-3, not a C-47, so it's way, way, way before World War II. I'm gonna have you read this checklist for me, just the left-hand side, and you give me the questions, I'll give you the correct answers. Okay, so the exterior and interior pre-flight. It's all complete. Log books. On board. Landing gear pins. Removed. Control locks. Removed. Check breakers. Check. Hydraulic quantity. Check. Hydraulic pressure. Check. Escape hatch. Secure. And I trimmed the pre-flight checks. This is the sort of thing that I share with Patreon supporters as uncut videos. Charge briefing. All right, it's gonna be your takeoff. I'm gonna help you get to the runway, and then we'll finish all the checklists on takeoff, just like we talked about yesterday. Just try to relax, keep your eyes and head outside the airplane, and pretend it's a Piper Cub. I'll take care of everything else. The whole secret is you being fluid and not a piece of steel. If you lock up and go rigid, then it won't work. Just relax, yeah. let the airplane do most of the work, and go with the flow. It'll be great. This is the biggest airplane I've ever flown by a long shot and in the busiest, craziest place literally in the world. This is the middle of the week at Osh. We're clear left. But this is a busy day. So trying to negotiate the partying out of here, all the traffic all over the place, and also trying to manage this airplane I've never flown before that's monstrous. And I guess we can put that wing above a T6 at that high. <laughs> Looking good? I think so. I mean, it's going to go above a T6, right? Yep. Okay. Stay up saying you're good on the one side? I'm saying I'm good. It's tight, but it's good. That's awesome. We get so high, we just buried a T6 under it. I even going straight. You got a ton of right rudder in there, right? Yeah, it's just for the wind a little bit here. Yep. So is the tailwheel free castering or is it steering? It's free castering. Wow, an airplane this big with free castering tailwheel. Yep. Bonkers. If you want to read the taxi checklist, we'll get that knocked out here. The brakes are checked. Flap handle. Up. Flap indicator. Zero. And flap handle again. Neutral. Altimeters. Are set cross check. Uh, flight and nav instruments. All set cross check. Flight controls. Flight controls are checked. Okay. Engine run up. Or I guess not with you behind us. We're going to do the engine run up in a second here. I'm going to try to negotiate uh, an intersection takeoff here if I can get it. Our yellow DC-3 like uh, intersection departure, Papa 4, we're ready to go. DC-3 turn on Papa 4, hope short 3-6 left. Alright, so here's where things didn't go entirely smoothly. This is Oshkosh, it's super busy, but we had to do a run-up. So situational awareness is obviously the pilot in command's responsibility, but we also got a zillion marshals around and we're kind of also trusting the other pilots to keep track of their own airplanes. Alright, hold the yoke all the way back like this, and just put your checklist down for a second. We're just going to do a run-up real quick here. Make sure everything is uh, looking good here. Y'all clear on your side? Clear. Unfortunately, that J3 was no longer within my line of sight when I checked, and he'd continued to taxi into our prop last. You can actually see him sliding out of frame there to the right in this shot. Stop, he's asking you to stop your run up. It's, uh, the marshals are pissed off. DC-3 from 
last of the Piper off the taxiway. Oh, uh, shit. Three sick RV runway. Three the last of the Piper off the runway. Alright, power just cleared me out of the runway. Three, three. Line point, I need you to get up on the He's telling us to go. He's telling us to stop. Alright, the so segment here won't let me, won't let me go. I reached out to the community and got some additional info, as well as this image. The good news is that although the airplane slid out into the grass, weather vaned and hit its wingtip, apparently it was okay. You can see several people had to run out and hold it down. We'll debrief this in more detail at the end, but the bottom line is there are lessons to be learned here between the pilot of the J-3, ourselves, and the marshals. Kind of their job also to keep people clear from behind big airplanes? Yeah. Yeah. Welcome to Oscott. Yo, ZC3, uh, runway 36 left, line of point. Line of point 36 left, yo, ZC3. After the run-up and our takeoff clearance, I was concentrating to remember yesterday's briefing. Put your right hand right there. These will be forward. There you go. Just like that. Put your left hand on the yoke. There you go. Now look out the windshield. There's your job right there. You're, you're in this position. No matter what bumps we got, you stay heads up looking out the window. And I'm going to have you advance the power like this. And I'll, yep. And the power's coming up. Power's coming up. And I'm going to say that's good enough. When I tap your hand, this hand comes over here and goes on the yoke. Oh, you two hands. Two hands, yep. So after takeoff, you won't need to touch the power. Now it's a matter of rudder control okay. yoke and trim. Okay. That's all you get. And here we are about to do it for real. Here we go, here we go, we gotta go. I need traffic at the overhead. Power set. All right, easy, easy on your power. Just relax a second, see the powers are split. Okay. All right. All right, I got your power now. I got it, I got it. Put, there you go. Now push, push on the yoke. Yep. Easy, push on the yoke. Now relax your feet. Oh, Everything's relax. nice. See how easy everything is? Yeah. Nice and fluid. Relax. There's 80 knots. Rotate nice and easy. Levitate off and nose down a little bit. A little bit of left. Yep, we're going to come to the right. Oh, we're turning now. Yep. <laughs> come on. Come on to the right. Okay. I should have both hands on it still. Yep, on the, both hands. On the trim. On the trim. There you go. Yeah, need some back trim, eh? Yep, just a little bit. And tell me when you want to straighten out. We got traffic there and there. Are we going straight for a while? Or straight for the water. Okay, straighten it now. Straighten it out. Wing as well. Wow, that takes a lot of aileron. Jesus. There you go. Okay, and I'm trim. That was intense. I did a good job. Takeoff went smoothly, we briefed it, and I knew what to expect, and I think I handled that reasonably well. I knew where to have my hands when. It was all about being on the throttle and then moving over two hands on the yoke, which is something I'm not used to thinking about. I'm always a one hand on the throttle guy. In a plane like that, your right seat pilot is gonna guard the throttles so you don't have to worry about them moving. So you can really manhandle it, which it requires. I feel like I'm banking right, but is that just, that's good. Now just relax your upper body. See the big picture out here? There, there you maintain go. Maintain 12, okay. Maintain 1200. Yep. Let the airplane do most of the work for you. Yep. Oh, it is really smooth though, man, for an airplane that's big. Always pay attention to your left hand. Take a look at what your own left hand is doing. And a lot of times, not so much on you, but I see a lot of people, they're flying along looking out the window and their left hand is doing this. Right. If you're doing uncommanded commands to the yoke, you need to stop that. Right. Fly any airplane with firm pressure in the direction that you want to go. And if you want to move your hand, make sure it's because you wanted your hand to move, not because it was sitting over there going left, right, left, right, up, down, and, and we call it stirring the batter. Now let's try a little baby right hand turn. Rudder first. There you go. Nose is too high. The sight picture and cruise definitely took some getting used to. Have about that much bank? Yep, nose down now. Nose down, eh? Wow, yep. I feel like I'm diving, but you're yep. right, I'm climbing, Gee. Yeah, you're climbing 500 feet a minute. Shout out to Cloud Ahoy. This is my favorite debriefing tool. It was really fun to use it to debrief a flight in an 80 year old airplane. Now, left rudder. And level out. Straight now. Straight now. There you go. Good, good, good. Now you can crack your window open just a little bit. There's your air conditioning. Now relax, take a deep breath. Everything's good. You're at 22,000 pounds. We got plenty of gas. Everybody's comfortable back there. Flight shops, everybody in the cabin is uh, enjoying the flight. All right, don't make anybody sick yet. So what were the power settings for a cruise? You put your power back on climb? Well, we took off in 
40. We were at 27 inches, which was plenty. We went to our right hand turn, got the gear up, and then we came back to 36 and 23.50. And then we uh, finished climbing at 30 and 20.50. Right now our props are at 20.50 RPM, and now we're at cruise 25 inches and 20.50. Flight Chops himself in the left seat flying the DC-3 at Oshkosh. What do you think? Uh, it's awesome. It takes a lot of muscle to move it, but it's very smooth. That Mustang is buzzed us. Yep. That's freaking awesome. I found out later that was actually Wags, who had flown with last year. Definitely check out that episode if you missed it. This is a rush, man. It is so nice. All right, let's make a little left-hand turn here. A little rudder first. There you go. Now see how far the nose is wanting to fall in the turn? Yep. The nose is down. You're almost, there you go. Got to pull back up a little bit. Yep. That's good. Go wings level, a little bit of right rudder. Augment it with a little bit of aileron. This flight was definitely an aviation sensory overload for me. And it was over before I knew it, but Dan had one more surprise for me. He was going to let me land it. Yellow DC-3 Warbird. Uh, reported two mile right base. <laughs> Down. Yellow DC 336 left. They're clear. Uh, initially, we got set up for runway 36 right. Then they changed us over to 36 left at the last minute, so we had to sort of sidestep. There was no such thing as a stable approach on this one, but I'm still happy with where I got it. Put your hands right here. On the red tub. Relax your upper body. We're going to 36 left now. Yeah, so your right. check is good. Everything is nice and easy. Your speed's on 90 knots, which is very nice. Let this airplane land itself. Nice and easy. There you go. When I tell you to, we're going to ease the throttles back, not close them, okay? Okay, you want to run the center line? Yep, center line. We're going to make it. Are we off freaking out? Can you square it up? So we're just like five feet off the ground now, right? Yep. Hold, hold the yoke back a little bit. No, run away. Ease the power back just slightly. Easy, easy, easy. Hold it. Hold it. Oh, oh bounce. Okay. A little bounce. Yeah, all right. Who has the power? Yeah, you fixed the. 28 final X. You're okay. You're all right. Oh, my God, dude. <laughs> well, let me do it. I appreciate right, it. I got the airplane. You're okay. You got the airplane. Yep. All right. Not bad for your first one. Yeah. It's kind of hard to see this sight picture. Yeah. I really didn't think we had much defense, but it's so heavy, right? That's why you kept bouncing. All right. Did that get your heart pumping? Yes, sir. All right. Nice job, man. Thank you. For that landing, I really thought I had it right because I, I, I tried to memorize the sight picture on the ground taxiing. That's my training from Dennis and the steerman always taught me, like, look at the sight picture now before we take off. I innately started rounding at it about the right time. And then I asked, am I about five feet off the ground right now, like from the mains? And it, he confirmed I was. So I thought, great, I got five feet to go. I'm going to gently put her down. And I really, really thought I had it right. But I had a tiny bit too much descent rate. And it, there was a little bit of a bounce, and then the bounces just did that classic thing where they kept getting <laughs> bigger. It's such a heavy airplane. And we blipped the power a little bit just to try to soften it up. But I mean, if you look at the size of these tires, it's like just giant beach balls. Uh, that combined with the weight of the airplane, I guess if you don't get her down smooth, it's gonna bounce. Everybody says it's like a giant cub. I disagree. <laughs> it's not like a giant cub. Fundamentally, in terms of what you do, yes, you know, you gotta use lots of rudder for everything, and, that applies, but it's just really heavy on the controls, really sluggish, so I would not compare it to a giant Cub. Maybe a little bit more like the Stearman. That's all the only experience I've got to relate it to, but it was very unique and an uh, awesome experience. Happy to share it. All right, let me get rid of those, of those. We'll do avionics off. That was intense, man. That wasn't Steve. I hope it didn't break but your No, that was a great looking landing. I can no, see that three pointer. I knew there's a steerman pilot it was right a, there. It was a three bouncers, what it was. <laughs> Good job. Chops, 
Yes, sir. That was a really good flight. My only uh, complaint is the uh, cabin service. I didn't get a drink. Yeah, I think we need a drink now, though. <laughs> All right, here we go. Stay tuned to the end for the debrief about the run-up incident. And please do visit flightshops.com to check out our back catalog of over 100 episodes. Join our mailing list so we can let you know when we publish. And you can play the monthly contest where we've got giveaways from our sponsors. And of course, keep your flight chops sharp. Uh, we're taught as pilots not to do our run-up when, when we're on an active taxiway, and we know that there's airplanes behind us. So we were cleared for takeoff from intersection Papa 4, taking off to the north. So we went perpendicular to the runway. If you remember, we made a left-hand turn and held there for a minute. And that is the appropriate place to do your run-up because now anybody else that's taxiing in that line knows, especially it's in all the FAA publications, never get behind a really large airplane. So what we had happen, unbeknownst to us, was that a Piper Cub pulled up directly behind us. Of course, we didn't know that. And then we did a, a nice, gentle little power-up run-up unbeknownst to us, the Cub was still there. The guy on the ground got mad because we did a run-up without asking his permission. And in the debrief from him, I said, well, what is the signal for us asking permission to do a run-up? And he said, you should go like this. And I said, well, that's, that's our engine start signal. If you have an airplane holding perpendicular, you as ground marshals should probably stop traffic or let them scurry across but don't allow a Piper Cub to park directly behind us because we can't see him. Big lesson learned for anybody taxiing around here, be very cautious behind very large airplanes. We can't see behind us, especially if you're in a tiny little yellow Cub. Yeah. I mean, you gotta wonder what this guy's thinking. So he's lucky it wasn't worse. He's lucky it wasn't worse. It turned him a little bit and uh, he scooted off into the grass. So there's no damage to the airplane. Good lesson learned, maybe EAA can include a little section in there for taxi procedures, where to do a run up, how to do a run up, and include some training for the ground guys, and vent a signal where if somebody wants to do a run up, because all the airplanes have same problem if you're in a Cessna 195 how do you see behind you to tell what you need to do and everybody's got to do a run-up at some point so the question is and you don't want to do it on the runway because you got to go and you don't want to do it on the runway because because you got to go you, you get on the runway you got to go